These lucky men didn't need expensive lawyers. They emigrated from the old country years ago, when Anglo-Saxons were always welcome and the British quota was never filled. They're all members of the British United Services Club in Hollywood. Americans are allowed in if they fought alongside us. Ladies are not allowed in. And I'm here because I'm going to lead a community sing-song after the speeches. Tonight is past President's Night. They're all seated at the top table, including my old friend Scotty, Colonel Ian Goldstone, and he's been president three times. There's Colonel Shake, the polo man. And good Lord, it's Captain Plug, the man who battled for commercial radio in Britain back in the 1920s. Ah, this is an old, hallowed military tradition, the passing of the port to the left, with the decanter never touching the table. Gentlemen, please charge your glasses and be upstanding for the loyal toast. Our current president, Lieutenant Colonel Laurie Presack. The President of the United States. The President of the United States. Mr. Vice. The Queen. The Queen. The Queen. God bless her. Our Vice President, an American Marine Reservist. Our headquarters is the Maskers Club. And I'd like to think that 1765 refers to the founding of the club, but actually it's only the street number. Anyway, the Maskers does have a great history, dating back to the 1930s, full of Britishers. Amongst its founder members, Ronald Coleman, who was to play Clive of India on the screen, and C. Aubrey Smith, who specialised in lords, bishops, admirals, generals. He'd once been England's cricket captain. In the early days of the talkies, the clear enunciation of these men was very much in demand, and it's a sound that Americans still admire. Speech time now, our Consul General, Tom Aston. Gentlemen, it's 12 months since I first spoke to this club. You may remember that I then spoke on past President's Night, and it was my privilege to be able to explain how it came to be that I was in the RAF as a navigator. Tonight I've been asked to explain how it came to be that I am a companion of the Order of St. Michael and St. George, which is another high-flying occupation. <laughs> um, it's with a certain amount of trepidation that I stand to do this conscious as I am that this is going on public record at this present time. Uh, others, I am not the first, have talked about honour and chivalry on public record and live to regret the fact. Um, there is my coat of arms, the Aston coat of arms. I will read you what it says on the back to describe this very simple coat of arms. It says that the arms are argent, a fess and in chief three lozenge sable. Crest, a bull's head cooped or armed or armed argent tipped sable. <laughs> and the motto, which I've never been able to which I've never been able to get a proper translation in Papam Cornua Tendo, and if any of you are real Latin scholars you might help me with it. I suspect that it either means that I'm on the horns of a dilemma, <laughs> or, which may be more appropriate, although the first is not inappropriate for a diplomat, that a little bull goes a long way. <laughs> Second verse for Plum Diggers. When Wurzel gets to London, he goes to a swell cafe, and he sees a well-stacked lady digging into a fat fillet, and he's watching her twin tremblers when he hears a snapping sound. Oh Lord, one of her assets has slipped out of her gown. Ha 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 ha, dee dee, Wurzel may seem dumb, but though his eyes look at his nose, he's a clever one. Now we have the pale. 
restaurant went quiet because that thing had dropped. But Wurzel grabs the silver spoon and spoons it back with a plop. The diners clap, but Wurzel says, I am a silly loon. Next time that happens, sweetie, I'll make sure to warm the spoon. Ah! Ah, ha, 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 Wurzel may see some. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's lovely. Oh, come on. <laughs> my neighbor, Suze Randall, at work. Remember when I was trying to call her earlier so as I could swim in her pool, the nice girl from Worcestershire? Back in England, she became a top model girl. Now, like Roy Dean, she works behind the camera creating stunning studies for magazines like Playboy and Hustler, teasing us with beauty, unconcerned with British yeah. Fortnight. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, think I like the bikini marks, actually. I think that's um, nice. <laughs> 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 Get down on you. <laughs> Now, I think it would be nice. It would be nice to get you to lose that top somehow. Yeah, if you can. Maybe that's kind of like. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, if you can lose it like that, that's fabulous. Arching your back. Yes, yes, that's fabulous. Oh yes, yeah, that arch in the back is great. Yes. Hey, pull your knickers down again. Yeah, oh, that's good. Yeah. Lovely. Hey, open your legs. Come on. Oh, <laughs> nice. Great, now I'm going to want you to fall backwards. Fall backwards onto that. Yes, yeah, great. That's beautiful. Now yeah, I want those knickers to come off now. Yes. Oh, lovely. Great, great. Beautiful. That's lovely. Yeah, you hear Yes. I love that art. Fabulous. Fabulous. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Absolutely good. Suze, thank you very much indeed for allowing me to have my morning swim here. It's a pleasure. Really nice. Hey, by the way, at this time, right now, I believe, in England, the presses are grinding uh, with the story of your life, which is coming out of the <laughs> news of the world, isn't it? I know. And I can't get it here because the place where I get my papers from, which is called Hometown Papers down in... Sin Row on Selma, Las Palmas, doesn't sell it. They sell the, te the uh, Telegraph, but not the News of the World. Now, what is in it? Well, it's basically filth. Filth? What? <laughs> but the main gist of the story is how a nice girl from Worcestershire became quite a nice girl as a nurse. Then became a naughty model. A naughty it, one? In what sense? Well, me, I was sort I'm of, you know, yeah. some, you know, some legs apart and it's a bit rude, really. Can we have that again? <laughs> <laughs> you really got a couple of very nice assets there, if I might say. Thank you. I just hope they stay with me. You seem to have become quite Americanized, Suze. I mean, yeah, do you feel no, very American now? Cause I yeah. I, this is the first time I felt at home. <laughs> it was in Los Angeles. Really? You I felt love it here, yeah. Did you feel repressed in England, I mean, for what you wanted to do? Oh, uh, the difference is, is tremendous. I mean, I was very happy in England, but trying to make a living as a photographer and get started as a photographer at the time that I did was extremely difficult, if not impossible, because there's, there was very little work, loads of photographers, and we were literally starving. As an ex-rock and roller who's got into more sedentary and scholastic things, uh, I wonder, in 20 years' time, are you going to be doing this same nude photography? Oh, God, no. I don't want to shoot pussy for the rest of my life. In fact, I don't know, I wouldn't imagine that I'd be doing it for more than two years. Maybe never again after the news of the world. <laughs> Why, are there many other revelations in that? Yes. Oh. <laughs> I'm dying to get my copy, but I can't... Well, you know, it's based on the book that I've written. What's that called? Success. Oh. A mix of sex, success, and excess. <laughs> Sounds a bit like Mae West, though. Uh, 